Do you know the 14 traits of successful chiropractors? We've interviewed some of the top chiropractors in the industry and have identified the common traits that they all share. Jump on over to www.chirobusinessmojo.com to get your free report today. Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. Hello, hello. I am Dr. Richard Day, and this is the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast. So great to be with you again here today. Well, I'm excited because I've got Dr. Ben Knight on the show. His practice hasn't been open that long, but he is killing it. Dr. Ben Knight was born and raised on a farm outside the small town of Sargent Bluff, Iowa. He completed his undergraduate studies at Morningside College in Sioux City, where he was a four-year letter winner and an All-American in wrestling, and he later attended Northwestern Chiropractic College, where he met his wife, Chelsea. Not only does he have a high-volume, high-collecting, vitalistic practice, but he's been able to create a practice model where the wheels are still turning even when he's not there. Dr. Knight and his wife completely step away from the office for a vacation every two months. He now resides in Chanhassen, Minnesota with his wife, Chelsea, and their two dogs, Bailey and Greco. The two of them love spending time in nature, fishing, listening to vinyl records, and working on growing the new startup church they belong to. Welcome, Dr. Ben Knight. Hello. How are you doing, Richard? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Doing good. Thanks for uh, having me on this call tonight. You bet. I appreciate you being on the show. And uh, feel free to jump in there and uh, cl- fix any of those holes in the bio I may have glossed over when I was going through it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. You want me to start off with it? <laughs> well, you know, anything I missed? Uh, I, <laughs> any glaring holes or did we cover a lot of it? You know, I think we covered a lot of it. I would say... You know, in, in the bio, we kind of kind of set over last minute, so I apologize on that. But I, th- I think the big thing about uh, kind of telling a little bit about my upbringing, um, growing up on a farm and uh, just in a real small town, um, one of the things where we grew up, my dad was an entrepreneur. He had several small businesses, and growing up being around it, um, I just learned the value of a handshake and honoring your word. And, uh, you know, I think that would be the only the only gap in the bio, the the – the aspect of that small town feel is something that we brought into our practice and our patients really appreciate it. Wow. What a blessing. Uh, and I guess maybe a head start in life, having a parent who's an entrepreneur. I, neither of my parents were, and uh, there's a whole lot of business lessons I had to learn later in life. So that's great that you had someone right there to sort of help you out. Yeah. You know, it, it actually guided me into chiropractic school, to be honest. Uh, my, my dad worked in the corporate world for 20 years and growing up, I remember when I was getting ready to start going to college and I was in high school thinking about these decisions. And uh, my dad always just said, you don't want to work work for someone else. Work for yourself, son. Um, and for the longest time, I was enrolled in medical school at the University of Iowa. Uh, and that, that kind of flipped the switch for me when uh, it came real that I wanted to I wanted to be my own boss someday. So was that what initially got you into chiropractic? It wasn't an injury that a chiropractor helped or something like that? You know, I wish I could say it was I knew the amazing power of the nervous system and I have a great story, but I really don't. I saw a chiropractor all through wrestling in college, but it was just uh, I loved I loved chiropractic. I liked working with people and uh, I, I wanted to be my own boss. So the business aspect uh, that came a little bit easier for me to start. Well, that's great to hear because I had a, uh, a similar story. You know, I was always looking for something I could get into where I could be my own boss, but I wasn't quite sure what it is I wanted to do. And chiropractic ended up helping my son at the time who was an infant. Uh, and I thought, boy, this looks great, not only from, you know, being able to help people perspective, but from an entrepreneurial perspective too. And I think that uh, that's maybe what's missing a little bit for a lot of students who are in school right now is that they don't understand it as a business side and that they will, you know, to the, to being in practice and that they will be running a business as an entrepreneur, um, at some point. And, and those are important skills to have. Yeah. You know, it's a lofty dream for everybody in school. Really. They all say, yeah, I want to run my own office. If you ask them, and then they say, it starts getting down to that crunch time and the reality kicks in that, Hey, I'm not just going to be a chiropractor. I got to be a boss. I got to, have do my own HR. I got to do my own hiring, firing, build my own team. There's a lot that comes into it that you just don't realize when you're a student. You're right. Well, when did you open your practice? Uh, so I opened February of 2015. So uh, just a little over 19 months ago. Wow. And how's it been going so far? Uh, it's been going fantastic. I can't say that it's been nothing but rainbows and sunshine. You know, we go, you go through a lot of ups and downs, but 
Um, we've had a, a, a certainly a lot more good days and bad days, that's for sure. Well, take me back to that point, you know, uh, I guess less than two years ago. What was your mindset? Paint a picture for us, if you would, of your mindset at that time and maybe uh, the startup capital that you had to get started, if you don't mind sharing, and, uh, and your biggest fears at that time. Yeah, so um, well, a little bit of my history is I – I, I wrestled competitively um, for 20 years and growing up, it, I, I, I got to give my dad all the credit in the world because he always told his kids, he just engraved it into us. You can do anything you set your mind to. So hard work wasn't, wasn't like a, a not an option, um, but I didn't have any finances. I had saved up over 20 grand while I was in school, went to a bank, went to probably 10 different banks trying to get loans and they all laughed at me. So I had to have my dad co-sign a loan with the bank for them to give me a loan I, when I first went to the bank with 20 grand, they offered me a $10,000 loan because on, on a sheet of paper, you're just a big piece of liability with $200,000 of debt. Um, so my dad had to put a lien on his business so I could get my loan. So it, it left me with a, a very fearful mindset that I have to succeed. I, you could ask my wife. She went through the whole process with me of opening and getting new patients. And that a week before I opened, I laid in bed every night and probably slept. 10 minutes. I took 20 minute naps. I was just laying in bed thinking that they got to say yes. What if they don't say yes? Um, so for, for me, it was just a failure wasn't an option. It, it, it wasn't an option because it was more on the plate than just myself. I had, I had to succeed so that my dad wouldn't lose his business. Well, how much prep did you, and by the way, no pressure there, right? Not at all. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, uh, how, um, uh... How did what did you do? I guess first starting out, did you do some pre planning before you opened? Were you able to market and get out there and get your name out before you had everything ready to go, or did that come after? So that would be my advice to students in school: is figure out how to get new patients while you're in school. I was fortunate my first day of school, a guy grabbed me, pulled me off to the side. Um, he was another wrestler that knew me from college. And he said, hey, there's a lot more than this than this going to class. He's like, you got to learn how to get new patients. So when I was in school, I marketed all through school for local offices. Um, my last year and a half of school, I was actually the marketing manager at a very high volume office that saw over a thousand visits a week. And he had he had goals every month. We had to have 30 new patients. Otherwise, he was you were sitting down with you saying, what happened? Where are they at? Why aren't we having more new patients? So when I was in school, I got very good at getting new patients. So um, was this a part time job? Yeah, I I was in class all day. I, anytime I had breaks from class, I was driving down there, setting up talks, doing lunch and learns, setting up screening events. I was going business to business. I essentially, it was a small town of 18,000 people. I stepped foot in every business in that town. Wow. And is this the town you ended up practicing in yourself? No, it's not. I, I practice complete other side of the cities. Um, but I learned the hard way to get new patients. I would not suggest any student go beating down every door in your town. There's a lot better ways of getting new patients. Um, but when I was doing my pre-marketing of where I wanted to open, I knew what it was like, what I needed to set up events. So it made it really easy. There was a town I really wanted to open in. I thought it was the right place, but I was marketing before I actually signed a lease and I realized like I wasn't getting anything set up. I was getting no, no friction. I wasn't getting anything going. So I went to the town over and I started going business to business and realized, holy smokes, before I had even signed a lease, I had multiple events set up. I had places I could go in and screen at. Um, and that was, that was kind of a deciding factor. I, instead of opening a town of 65,000, I went to a small town of 22,000. And do you feel that that was helpful to you, just having that? I mean, it sounds like it, it was. Was it because of the size, you think? Was that a factor? Um, for me, because it was congruent with me. I grew up in a smaller town um, where we did business locally. Um, this town's a, a kind of a close-knit town. Um, people like to support local businesses, and it was for me. Um, now, I knew how to market. I didn't have any referrals my first month in practice. Everyone, I, It was all hunting. I went out and got all our new patients. Well, one of the things that I was really impressed by when I was uh, reading over your story, um, and, and it sounds like the networking is the key, but uh, tell us how you went from zero to 200 office visits a week in under 100 days. Yeah, yeah. Um, so 
and I wish it was, um, I wish I could say I had a bunch of home runs. Uh, initially it was just a lot of hard work. My first, I, I did a lot of screening and I did several talks before I opened my office. Um, Brad Glowacki, he's one of my mentors. He taught me how to do the, his 10 minute talk. Um, so I did several 10 minute talks and a few lunch and learns. And our first week in practice, we had 40 paid appointments on the books. Um, but uh, you know, you don't, you don't go from zero to 200 with 40 new. The, the biggest thing was I, I had a lot of solid people in my life in the chiropractic community that were okay getting on a call with me once a week for 10 minutes and just motivating me, keeping me on my toes. Um, and the, any new docs out there, the best advice I think I could give them is, uh, when you start having a little bit of success and doing good, it gets really easy to just, you know what, ride that, just ride that wave and say, ah, I'm good. But when the momentum picks up, the best thing you can do is just keep going, keep raise your energy to it. Um, but when we, you, you had a follow up question when you were talking to me earlier, did we stay at 200? We did it right away. Um, cause I wasn't ready to lead 200 patient visits a week. Uh, we went really hard, went to 200 and then dropped down to about 150, 125. And I had to become better at more than just getting new patients and getting them to say yes to care. Um, we're back well over 200. We're getting ready to break 300 again. But um, for me, it was, uh, I think the best way of growth isn't necessarily exponential, but stair stepping, getting good at seeing 50 a week. And then you jump to 75 and then you jump to 100 and you keep climbing. So tell me about your team. What does that look like? It's comprised of you. Is, does your wife work there? Do you have CAs? Do you have massage therapists? Are there other docs? Yeah, so uh, my wife doesn't work there. Um, she just as well have. Uh, she was working with me pretty much full-time in the beginning marketing. Um, but I have an office manager. Uh, that was the best thing I did was uh, give, immediately give someone the role of office manager to take the stress off of me and protect my energy. So that I wasn't doing so much and delic I could delegate tasks. Um, we have another CA up front. I have an associate doc, and we have a massage therapist that works full time up. Now, does so we have a four full time employee? Do you do all of the marketing, or do some of those other folks pitch in? I don't do any of it anymore. Um, I, I trained them all how to how to do the marketing. Each person has a small aspect of our marketing wheel. In the beginning, I did everything, but now I just do new patient. I see our patients, and that's about it, and run the office. Um, so I, I also I'm, – I'm pretty close to the chiropractic school. So about every six months, I let a new student come into my office um, and work in my office, and I teach them some of the stuff that I was taught while I was in school. Um, so I do have one student right now who's an absolute stud who does a lot of marketing with us too. That's great. I mean, that's great experience for a student. I'd say like you, like it was for you getting out there, getting in front of people and overcoming whatever fears you have about, you know, being on stage, so to speak. Yeah. Get, getting the reps in when it's not on your dime. Right. Well, let's get down to brass tacks about the specifics of your business. If you don't mind sharing, um, how long is a typical visit in your office? Um, so we do a tonal base technique about three minutes and that's if I'm, you know, I, I one thing that I haven't been able to get rid of is that a small town guy in me. I, I talk, I like to talk to my patients. I have a personal relationship with them. Um, I like to ask them how their kids are doing, uh, how their baseball games went. An average visit's about three minutes in my office. They, I mean, they could be as short as ninety seconds, but anywhere from three to five minutes, I would say. Do you take insurance or are you cash? So we started out one hundred percent cash. Um, that was all I knew how to do when I was in school was close a cash care plan. Um, but I'm in a pretty decent insurance state. So uh, as I, uh, as I was more into practice, I got tired of turning down people with 30 visits and no deductible. Um, so we're probably about 15% insurance, 10% PI and uh, 75% cash. Yeah. I've found that it's really regional, you know, it's uh, specific, whether or not you're going to take cash or, or insurance or, or both. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, it really is. Um, for me in the beginning, I, I, the, the guy I worked for, he was 100% cash, would never touch insurance, was completely against it. I'm in a little bit different area where some of the industries in our area, they, they give 30 visits and they pay for 30. Um, and, and there's no deductible versus an out-of-network with them. They're a $6,000 deductible. Um, so, And it kind of clicked with me when, uh, m when me and my wife were getting married and we were enrolling for her insurance. I'm like, man, we're paying these premiums and stuff. I'd sure like to be able to use it. 
Yeah, that's that's what we found too. And you know, I guess when when you have insurance and it is covered and there is no deductible, you want to use it. And uh, and a lot of times we found that even if you're out of network and you give someone that super bill. Well, that's something they have to go mail, and it's an extra step yep. or two for them. And, you know, if you just take that insurance and it's pretty seamless to that end user or patient, then uh, it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, so we're in a we're in a pretty prosperous area. When we were running just pure cash, we were making about $85 a treatment, which I, I'd like to say that's on the upper tier of chiropractic. Uh, when we started taking insurance with it and some, some auto cases in the mix, uh, last month we were making about $111 a visit. That is not too shabby, especially. Yeah, that's. <laughs> especially. We're not getting nickel and dimed. What's that? Say that again. We're not getting nickel and dimed. Yeah, absolutely, and especially so soon after opening. I mean, that's the part that really blows me away. A lot of people would love to hit these numbers after four or five years in practice, and you're there, you know, straight out of the gate almost. Yeah, you know, um, for a really long time, I was just focused on that volume, 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 and I think that's why we grew so fast. Um, because there's just, you know, there's, there's lives out there in your community. There's people you got to reach. There's, there's someone on their knees praying for your help. And it was all about that in the beginning. But, um, a big part of my philosophy, and, uh, I can't say I coined the own term, my, the term, but one of my mentors, Brad Glowacki always says, you know, you need to strive at 360 degrees of success. And I realized that you, it's one thing to work hard. And I had that hard work, but you also got to work smart. And there's no shame in, uh, making a little extra money for your visits. You, you're worth it as a chiropractor. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, what type of marketing is working the best for you today? Is it the networking and the screenings or what else you got going on? So I love that, that, that question. Um, one thing that I teach my marketing team is that there has to, so we actually have a large whiteboard in our conference room and we have a wheel on it, what we call our marketing wheel. It's got several spokes coming off of it. And there's several aspects that we expect new patients to trickle in from every month. Say lunch and learn goes bad or one of my community dinners goes bad. Um, that's okay because we know we're going to get new patients from the other areas of the spoke. Um, in the winter months in my area, we do all talks. Um, we pretty much become about a 70% referral-based practice now, but uh, uh, we, did, we don't really stop on the referral on the aspect that, you know, there's – there's still a lot we can do out there. There's there's tons of opportunities. So right now, for the months of October through February, we're heavy on talks. We do a lot of lunch and learn programs. Um, and I do one community dinner a month. It's kind of like my patient orientation or doctor's report, you'd call it, I guess. Um, and we are, we're always good for five to ten new patients from that, uh, where our patients bring a spouse or a friend. Um, but in the summer months, there's a ton of big festivals in our area because I'm in Minnesota. It's beautiful out. Um, and we do some pretty large screening events in the summer months. Um, I like to say that we do zero screening because it's not enjoyable. Nobody likes to go out screening. But uh, some of those big events provide really good for our office. Well, how do you market your talks? Do you market it just strictly internally and maybe on your website? Or do you you know, go out in the community and put up posters and banners and that sort of thing? So we, we get some talks from our patients, but most of it is actually going into the businesses and talking to the managers. Um, so I guess the best gem I could drop for new docs or docs looking to add something to their marketing team um, is we run what we call a health strategies program. I've found about a third of all the businesses we walk into and tell them that we have a health strategies program. Um, if they'd be interested in us host sponsoring a lunch or breakfast at one of their staff meetings, we'd love to. And the whole program is designed on increase in productivity and decrease in sick days. It's about a 20 to 30 minute program. You guys do regular staff meetings. That's, that's about the magical script. Um, the big thing is we just, we follow up with all the businesses we go into after about two, three follow-ups, we get about one out of three say yes. Um, so we get, we do a lot of, uh, one thing I like is, uh, being able to pick your new patient. Versus uh, sometimes when we get new patients coming in from the internet, they're just looking for that one visit, get me out of pain today, versus going out and pulling your new patients into the office. So what do you do in terms of wellness with your patients once they once they come in? Because a lot of people do come in initially because they're in pain. Once they're out of pain, how do you transition to wellness or do you? Yeah, so we do. That's um, that's the strongest aspect of our office. Um, we're not crazy new patient heavy. Um, we're really good at converting the people that come in. Um, but the office I worked in, it was in a small town, 18,000 people. This doc's seen over a thousand a week for 15 years. 
and he didn't do any more than 10 to 12 new patients a month. It's just everybody stayed with him. Um, so a big part of it's creating that culture in our office um, where they want to stay, but also, you know, providing the results. Uh, chiropractic is amazing. The body's amazing at a healing, but uh, we have about a 90% conversion rate from when they, when they get done with a, you know, a corrective program with us that they actually convert into maintenance with us, whether it's once a week or every other week. Um, so that's, that's when, that's when practice got nice for us is when we didn't have to constantly go get new patients. We had just regular wellness patients coming in, you know, over a hundred visits every, every single week. Well, let me ask you this. Clearly one of the big aspects to your success is hard work. Is that it? Is there something more? I'm sorry. You, you cut out on me just a little bit there. Hey, let me, I'll re-ask that question. Um, yeah. Obviously, you've had a lot of success so far in practice, uh, I would say more than most, and it's a result of a lot of hard work. Would you agree that, is it hard work for, is that the main ingredient? Is that the secret, so to speak, of success, or is there something else? You know, I, I think, uh, you know, success is measured in everyone's own, based on everyone's own values. Um, hard work is definitely a, a main ingredient in it. I would say probably the second, maybe the greatest ingredient is realizing that I don't have it all figured out. And um, one thing about our office is uh, we're very good at the speed of implementation. And if uh, something's not working and we want to give something else a try, we'll try it. Um, we're not stuck in our ways. If there's a, a new way of getting new patients in, we're going to give it a try. Um, I, I think, you know, if there's docs out there that are kind of stuck, and I've worked in offices that – we felt like we were stuck for a while and, uh, uh, you know, you just, you, you get kind of stuck in the mundane. I think the greatest thing is just, uh, seeing what other people, what's working for other people and diving into it. We're, we're always learning in our office. We're always studying to be better. Um, every single month we sit down at the end of the month with our stats. We look at the weakest aspect of our stats and we train on something new. How can, how can we make this one thing better and how can we make it change? So next month the stat changes. Well, I want to go to something that you had mentioned uh, in your bio information, and that is that you take a vacation every two months. What a great reward award for all of the hard work that you do. Um, how do you make that work? Um, so I would say the biggest thing for us is uh, we have a, I have an associate doctor now. The main reason of bringing on an associate wasn't because we were too busy for me to handle it. It was because uh, a good business owner, I think, uh, doesn't just work in his business, but he works for it. Um, so me and my wife, we try and none of our families in Minnesota, uh, we try and step away for three, four, five days every, every couple months and just get away. Um, the great thing is, uh, a lot of times we have our biggest days when I'm not in the office, uh, but it's because we have a great team. Uh, our, my office manager is fantastic. Um, when we're not there, the wheels are still turning. Well, well, I love that philosophy of uh, work hard, play hard, and I would maybe even add play often, and it sounds like you do just that. We well, try to. It may, it may not be too exciting, but we love going out with our dogs a lot. <laughs> well, uh, I want to touch – or I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier, and that was you said uh, you describe yourself as having 360 degrees of success. What does that mean exactly? Um, so, and this is something that is funny you ask, cause it's a conversation my wife and I had just last night. Um, the, the term 300, or the coin term 360 degrees of success is a lot of times you see these chiropractors that are just killing it in practice, but you go home and their home life sucks. Um, they don't have finding time for church or other priorities, whether it's themselves exercising. Um, and one of the things that, uh, we try and keep true is that uh, it's not just practice. When we go home at the end of the day, it's time with the family, time with my wife. On the weekends, we're very involved in our church. Um, it's just a big priority. Uh, we have a lot more priorities than just the practice. But I think that's been a, a big aspect of our practice, practice succeeding is we it, – it's not the only thing in our life. Um, I, I, I just I, – I would hate to think that all I did in my life was chiropractic. And I love chiropractic. I, it's, the, the, I think, the most amazing profession. But um, we just want to make sure that not only is the wheel turning in the practice, but it's turning at home. Yeah, that's great advice. I mean, I've I've known my fair share of docs who uh, the house is burning down, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, the practice is rocking and rolling. And in that one aspect of their life, they're killing it, just like you said. 
but other things aren't so good. And uh, I, I share the same values as you do in terms of that work-life balance. It's so important. There's so much to life beyond just chiropractic or business success. And uh, I really think you're on a path for burnout, you know, if you don't have that balance. I, that's the, how I see it. I completely agree. And, you know, um, I, I burned probably six months in. Six months into my career, I was feeling burnt because all I was doing is work, 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 go, go, go. Um, and it was amazing when my wife and I got married and we went on our honeymoon and for seven days, we just shut off. We shut the emails off. We shut the phones off. And I think that was when we realized how important it is to have other things. Well, this podcast is all about providing actionable content for our listeners, and you've already provided some great gems. Anything else you want to add in terms of what you'd recommend for, uh, let's break it down for the new doc and the experienced doc who's looking to make a change. Yeah, so um, new doc, whew, you know, I, I jotted down a couple bullets for this one. Um, I think the big thing is there's so much to offer when you're in school, and you got to be focused, but you need to be openly focused. Try not to get so stuck in your ways. I, when I was in school, it was my way or the highway. This is the only way to do chiropractic. Uh, if you're not doing this, you're not doing it right. Um, but it's figuring out what's congruent with you, looking at your long-term goals and then building your practice based on it. Um, and then fail faster. Um, as a new doc, you're going to come, you're going to face a lot of challenges and a lot of things that make you uncomfortable. Um, and my advice is to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, you know, you, 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 you never get to a level of success without failing. Nobody ever had success without a bunch of failures. You, you only hear about the, the things they're doing right, you know, that we hit 200 in a short period of time. But what a lot of people don't hear about is all the talks I went and did and got zero new patients. And I, I closed at the end of the talk for chiropractic patients and people looked at me like I was a ghost. Um, but you're going to fail. You're going to have failures and it's just get them out of the way. Well, that's a perfect segue in, uh, to our next area of discussion. And that's really the bigger picture in life. So you mentioned, you know, failing at a talk, but in life, have you had any big failures or challenges or obstacles that you've had to overcome? And what lessons did you learn from that? Yeah. So, um, and I wouldn't know if I would call it a failure, but probably a challenge. Um, I wrestled, started wrestling when I was four years old, was on a full ride scholarship in college. Um, and every, every wrestler who steps foot on a college mat, the first day your dream is to be an NCAA champion, to win the national tournament. Um, my junior year, I came into the season with a real high ranking. I, all the way through preseason, we had our first duel. The next day, I broke my elbow that night in practice, shattered my olecran on my arm, was hanging in the opposite direction, went into surgery the next day. Um, and the doctor looked at me, he said, you'll never wrestle again. You'll never lift weights again. Our job is to just get you to be able to use this arm again. Um, and it was a humbling moment in my life because I thought I was invinci invincible at the time. I thought that uh, I was indestructible. I could just go, 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 go. Um, and real quickly, you can see something that you work really, really hard for get ripped from you. Um, so I had to like, I had to really sit back and I had to rehab my body and heal my mind just so I could try and wrestle again. Um, I, I honestly didn't overcome it right away. It was, it, I mean, it, it rocked me. My whole life I had wrestled and then all of a sudden I couldn't. Um, but uh, I set my mind to getting back on the mat. And uh, I mean, I rehabbed it three times a day for almost six months. And I wrestled my entire senior season. So. Uh, and have you recovered fully to the point where it doesn't interfere with practice or yeah. anything like that? Yeah, I don't have any pain in it anymore at all. Um, I actually made the national semis my senior year, a year later. So um, it, was, it wasn't necessarily in the best shape wrestling-wise. But uh, I guess uh, the big thing is those challenges are going to come. The failures will happen. But uh, what, I, had to, I had to really develop as a man and figure out what my tenacity is. How hard am I willing to fight? How hard am I willing to bounce back? Yeah, that's a great lesson. I mean, it's I, there's a saying, and I'm probably getting it wrong, but it's it's not how many times you fall down or get knocked down; it's how many times you get up. Yeah, yeah, and it's I think that relates to practice too. There's a lot of times you're going to get beat up. Um, one thing we do in our practice, it's I don't know if I'd call it a ritual or anything, but uh, it gets really easy to focus on the losses, the patient who fell off from care, or someone who didn't start care who you really could have helped. Um, in our office, we don't let those get into our head. Um, you can you can let something that should have lasted two minutes take over your mind for the entire day. 
So in my office, me and my associate share an office space in my actual office room, and we have a win board. And all we put on it every single day is every win we have, whether it's somebody who 10 years of migraines disappeared after their last adjustment or two new patients started care. We had a couple referrals that day, and we just focus on the wins. Perfect. Perfect way to keep that mindset where it needs to be. Well, when you think of the word successful, who do you think of and why? Uh, that's a tough question. Um, the one guy that came to my mind when you said that's a guy by the name of Bob Coughlin. Um, I go to a, a men's group with my church on Friday mornings. Um, this guy's got five kids. He ran a, he had a startup IT company. He grew it to about 600 seats. Uh, and he realized that, uh, the money, the rat race wasn't, wasn't necessarily br- bringing him happiness. So he sold it all. And now all he does is lead other men. He coaches his kids' football teams. And he's really, he's really, really happy. He's joyful. And you can tell he's living a, a congruent life. That what, what he says he does. That's great. You know, when I ask that questions, I get a lot of, uh, a lot of the big names, Arnold Schwarzenegger or Tony Robbins or somebody like that. And these guys are, <laughs> you know, they're great heroes. But to hear somebody like that, who's really doing something that's making such a difference on a real personable level. That's, that's wonderful. Well, let me ask you this. Do you have any daily rituals, habits, or affirmation, affirmations that you do every day to keep you on track? Yeah, you know, um, I used to. I used to every single morning wake up and read the green books. Um, but I found I was doing it because it was something I was told to do. Um, it was something that I thought I was supposed to do. Um, for me, I would say the greatest ritual for me is just trying to keep a positive mindset every day. And it started probably three months ago. We created this wind board in our office. And I would say that's the one ritual we have. Um, I mean, I, I read books, I read books throughout the day. I read my Bible throughout the day. Um, but I think the greatest ritual is, uh, that I do is just focusing on all the successes that we had. Otherwise it's just so easy to get burnt out and run down with some of the failures you have. Well, I'm going to shift into our final thoughts. We're sadly coming to the end of the interview, but I do have a couple of things before you go. Do you have a favorite book you'd like to recommend to our listeners? Um, yeah, I'm sure it's one everyone's heard of, but uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I've read that book about five times. Um, just the art of communication, but the eh, there's a lot more in the book about the the more than the art of communication, but just uh, there's a lot of integrity built into the book. Yeah, I've read that one. I want to say, gosh, it's been at least 10 years ago, maybe longer. Um, but it is. It's one of those books that I think captured something that is um, as much true today as it was when it was written. And when was it written? 100 years ago, maybe, at yeah, this it point? Was written, it was written at least 50 years ago, I think, Dale Carnegie. Um, but I think uh, I think uh, the world was uh, – there was probably a little bit more integrity and uh, I don't know if the word pureness – to the world back then, I feel like we live in a, a little bit faster paced, corrupt world now. And it's the, the, the values and the teachings in that book are more, more potent today than they probably were back then. Well, I will definitely link to that book in our show notes. Um, what is the best business advice you've ever received? Um, yeah, this was uh, right before I graduated. Uh, I sat down with um, one of my late friends, Barry Anderson, who passed away of cancer, um, one of my initial early mentors in chiropractic. And uh, one of the things he said to me, because I kept asking him, you know, how many new patients should I have on the books? How many? And he said, you need to focus on getting the patient to say yes. He's like, you can get 100 new patients, but only if only 40 of them say yes to chiropractic, that's another 60 that may never say yes again. Um, so he told me, he said, if you create a solution to their problem, they will give you their last penny. Yeah, that is, that's the key. You got to find those solutions and you have to, or I'm sorry, you have to find those pain points or problems and, and give them that solution. And, uh, you know, there's a lot out there, a lot of shiny objects for chiropractors, I think. And, um, it keeps, keep on the simple message. Take care of that problem that that person has. And absolutely, they're going to tell their friends, their family and everyone about you. Yeah. And that's not saying, you know, we run a pain based practice or anything. We're a very vitalistic practice. Um, my first week of practice, I think we had several patients start with us. We had most of our first ever patients are still with us. And 
Uh, it's because we, we created a solution to their problem, and then we educated on, on them on what they could have. Well, Dr. Ben Knight, this has been a great interview. I really appreciate you sharing with us all of the valuable wisdom that you have so far. What's the best way for people to contact you and find out more if they want to? Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not super big on Facebook and social media, so I, probably a little bit of a letdown there, but uh, probably by my email. Um, I'm pretty good at getting back at emails throughout the day, so if people have questions or just wanted to link up, uh, my email is bennightdc at gmail.com. All right. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate your time and everything you've shared with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Richard. Thanks for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast at www.cairobusinessmojo.com.